Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. We are live on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Great to have your company. I'm Peter Martin. Alan Ruff, as ever, is alongside me. We've been together for 10 years, and every now and then we always just add a wee bit of quality here and there, Ruffy, uh, and then we bring in a few subs. And I'm yeah. delighted to say Tam came on full time, just proved his worth. Didn't shelly shally with the opinion. Yeah. No, no, no. You've <laughs> you built yourself up. You're, <laughs> you're in. And then, of course, we'll get Richard, who's just been. Yeah. Just a brilliant deputy, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, well, ten years we didn't really uh, identify that we really did need somebody who can drive a car. No, he got on the <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. Um, I have to say, one of my favourite documentaries, I don't know, over the last couple of years with lockdown, everybody's been binging on documentaries. One of them is, did you see The Last Dance? Uh, yes. The story of Michael Fantastic. Jordan. Fantastic, yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen it, um, then Richard's shoes actually feature in it because he's wear you are wearing Jordans oh. from uh, oh. the 80s, aren't you? They are, ab retro? They are like absolute so. belters, aren't they? I like them, aren't they? Uh, not quite Balenciagas, but they're no. still up there, aren't they? Yeah. Yep. I'll take yeah. them next week. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you take them, we'll take them off you when you're in here. <laughs> you don't know what you're dealing with. Anyway, Richard Foster's with us as well. We'll talk to Ruffy and Richard uh, about Partick Thistle and whether they're going to be coming back to the Premier League uh, next season. If they keep playing like they did last uh, night, then we'll have two people from the Championship on next season's show. Is that fair, Tom? Yes. <laughs> so, you know they battered them by all accounts. Yeah, absolutely. we'll get that story too. So there's lots to talk about. Of course, um, I think immediately we'll deal with some of the news. We'll talk about Rangers and Celtic in the European uh, ties that they've got. The return leg for Rangers against Borussia Dortmund. Ibrox will be bouncing for that one. And then, of course, Bodo Glimt against Celtic. We'll look at Champions League fixtures for tonight. Cast their eye backwards uh, to last night's games as well. So there's lots to talk about. And you can give us your opinion. Try and keep it decent on our YouTube channel. We'd love to have um, more than a few of you. We'll read your names out and with a bit of luck, um, you can participate and give us your opinion as well. So, that's what's on offer. First and foremost, no passports after Monday, Ruffy. Step in the right direction, although as ever with the government, there's a wee note of caution that mm -hmm. we might go back to certain other ways if there's another variant that pops along that we're not aware of. Yeah, I think we've got to be aware of that. But, I mean, I think a lot of supporters have been deprived, you know, of seeing football. I don't know what that, what, what that would be, you know, but there seemed to be a lot of the Celtic game that we were at last week. So, no, I think it's a step forward, but I still think we have to be cautious. Yeah, a lot of people uh, a lot of people are mentioning, where's Charlie? There's, I've never known so much concern for Charlie on this show when he's, not, when he's not here, but Dundee were supposed to play St Mirren, but it's just not happened yet again. The pitch um, has fallen foul of the, the really bad weather. Yeah, as the guys know, we're talking about the pitches at this time of year, some of them are poor, but... Dens Park was always a nice surface and I played there for a couple of seasons myself and because it's got a bit of a slope, usually the water runs down it into the corner, so I don't know what's been, been on up there. Yeah. Uh, but the pitch seems to be in a bit of a mess at the minute as well, so that's a, a disappointing for both clubs. Yeah, it's 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 usually a good pitch, Ruffy. Mm. Yeah, I, I think uh, before, obviously, Motherwell upgraded theirs, you know, Dundee was a, a surface and it's, I think it's an always uh, a stadium that's good, it's a good big wide park, you know, it's a good atmosphere in it. I, I mean, I, I, hate, I hate going back like 20 and 30 odd years ago, but I remember we played Dundee once and did the same problem and they wheeled out a tractor with big sponges on it. I mean, massive sponges and they yeah. just sponged, just went right down the park and, and soaked up all the water. In Dundee? In Dundee. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the headline <laughs> now. <laughs> New cleaning apparatus in Dundee. No, that just shows you. That's a front page lead, Ruffy. No, no, I remember to clear us in. Yeah, you know. okay. I well. also remember doing it in Capolo when there, were, there was a bit of frost on the ground and it was sort of a melting and somebody said, you need to do something about that. Uh, the game's going to get called off. And lo and behold, 15 minutes, a farmer coming in his tractor and actually just drove up and did <laughs> Up the park and the whole Look thing up. was all tracked up tracks. <laughs> I wrecked the pitch. It's nothing worse. Um, thanks to so many people posting their messages and, of course, lots of compliments about Richard being here. Uh, Matt says, Peter, were you not all about the passports not that long ago with your COVID agenda? Well, all we're doing is reporting what's happening, Matt, on the news. The, the uh, First Minister has basically said that the, they won't need them, so roll on, we're following the laws, that's the only thing I think we've been actually advocating over the last couple of years is when the rules come in, follow them, simple as that. Um, 
or take the Novak Djokovic attitude to it and then don't play. Uh, simple as that. Um, so no vaccine passports, which is a good sign. Um, VAR, that's the other one, the other big topic that everybody's talking about, Richard. It looks as if they're going to vote on it in April and then the possibility of between 80 to 100,000 pounds is the cost uh, for every club. You're, you're looking, you're saying to yourself, they might embrace it after the World Cup break, you know, once they get everything in place. Yeah, but, you know, that 80 to 1,000 pounds is a different figure, really, depending on which club you are. You know, the teams in the Premiership will be able to fund that, no problem. A lot of teams in the Championship the same. But then, if you're getting all 42 clubs to vote, then surely it's got to go, it's going to be open to all 42 of them. Now, the clubs at the bottom end, you know, League 2, League 1, they're not going to be able to afford that. So, there has to be a, a system, I think, where it's basically they take the whole cost of all 42 clubs and, and kind of the ones that can pay more pay a bit more. Yeah. That, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think they're going to vote for it. So what will end up happening is you'll get teams in the in the Premiership that have VAR and the rest of the, the, the divisions don't have it. Um, and then, you know, you, like what happens then if you, and then like I say, the Cup. So Rangers, Celtic, Aberdeen are drawn away to, you know, a Kelty Hearts who don't have VAR. Then the same, you know, if they don't get a penalty decision or a red card, then the same debates are going to continue on until all the clubs have the VAR set up. But I don't think they will because I don't think clubs will be willing to kind of fund the smaller teams, if you will. Yeah, I know you want to see it in all the divisions, um, Richard. It, it's it, it's a huge cost, but I, I can't see it on the, ba the basis of the operational cost as well in every lower league game too. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it is... I just think in, in fairness, you know, if you're getting all 42 clubs to vote on it, what's the point if they don't have it? So yeah. just get the 12 Premiership teams to vote on it or the, or the ones big enough in the Championship. But then you might get a situation where you've got some Championship teams who can have it. So then you've got half the league who've got it, half the league that don't. And then there is, is there fairness in, involved in that? Yeah. So I but just your think point about the, oh, well, if they play in the Cup, well, right now there are certain situations right across Europe where if they play in a certain tournament, there's no VAR. They just announce it. There's no VAR in this competition. Yeah, well, that, and, that, and that's, like I said, that might be the way it goes. But I think in terms of the finances, you, you will get a, you'll get splits within divisions that some teams can afford it and some teams will want it and other teams who, who can't or don't want it. And then what happens there? You know, is it just a case that the league go right, only five years want it in League One, nobody has it? Or or do they play with a split? Will five have it and five don't? Yeah. Can you see the championship embracing it, Ruffy? Again, it's just about finance. You know, and, I, and I've said to you before, there's a pot of gold at the end of the season and everybody gets a divvy of that pot depending on where you are. There's the top of the, the, the premiership to the bottom of the second division. Now, if you took that, I think if you took that pot, I don't know what it is, four million, five million, you know, and, and look at it seriously and say, right, this is what we need for VAR. Take the VAR money out and then split everything else accordingly, the, yeah. the, the way that they do it. I mean, the, the, the money for the top to the bottom is, is ridiculous. You know, it's ridiculous. If you're getting any, any of that pot of money, I want to spend it on the pitch, not on VAR. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Absolutely. And that, that's, that what it might uh, that's what it might boil down to. Teams who need the money just to survive and think, well, I don't really want VAR anyway, so I'll, I would take the money. Graham Alexander might be able to pay it with his fines. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I'm just thinking of the, uh, the back page lead now, which is Foster slams Fair Hill pitch. Yep, yep, that's <laughs> that's all there, it's all there, it's for us. Um, no, but I, I, I'd like to see it. I can't see it in the lower divisions. I can't really see it in the old divisions. I can't see the Clifton Hill or places like that. I can't see VAR yes. in disrespect to them. But I can see it in the top two divisions, maybe uh, the Premiership and the Championship. Yeah. But then if a Championship club gets relegated, then an arc team comes saying, up. You have it at Gayfield. What's yeah. the difference between Gayfield and, and Clifton Hill? You know what I mean? It's yeah. Well, the, the point is, uh, and this is where I will be slightly controversial about it, I believe if you want to play in the top flight and then the second uh, league which has ambitions to go into the Premier League then you have to follow certain rules within it one of them if it was VAR if you're coming in fine the other one that I we've been battering down the door on is you want to play in the top flight get rid of your artificial pitch you know, and they get away with murder. I'm looking at Partick Thistle's pitch now, and I'm thinking that official pitches might not be a bad thing. Yeah, well, well, at the end of the day, I mean, I, I bet you wish we were playing Nassau Tuffer now. Correct. Yeah, would you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would play, like, if we had, if we were on Hampton's pitch, for example, um, I think we'd, we'd be able to play a lot better football, and I think the results, uh, although our results at home have been pretty good, yeah. I think um, it would suit us better to be on a better surface. Yeah, but do you not think the top flight in Scotland, to be taken seriously, has to have all-grass pitches? 
I think it should be, yeah, and I think that the top flight in Scotland should have the finances to, to make sure their pitch is maintained properly and correctly. Um, you know, you will get times when you get adverse weather mm -hmm. conditions, kind of this period we're in just now, a lot of rainfall, you know, and, and uh, pitches will fall foul to the weather, but in general they should have enough resources to, to maintain a, a, a grass pitch. But the problem you've got there is, how many years ago did they say, oh, you need to have a 10,000 all-seater to get in the Premiership? Yeah. Absolutely, listen, I know St Mirren fans are just firing things and they, yeah. they absolutely have their, that. Their, their, fans as well. their stadium's great, you know, yeah. the St Mirren, and it's perfect for what they need it for. There's no point, 4,000 in a 5,000 capacity is better than, you know, 6,000 in a 20,000 capacity, because yeah. it just seems empty. No, I agree that, but remember this is only a one-hour show and we don't want to highlight all the mistakes <laughs> that have been made in the SPFL, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> clubs should be able to maintain their pitch, apart from the greedy ones that ground share. Um, you know, that's the other ones. Yeah. That, you know, <laughs> yeah, to, brilliant, to Tom. You're on fire today, by the way. But the other thing I was going to say to you is <laughs> clubs should be able to maintain their pitch, and if there are problems, then Mother will rectify it because yeah. over on the far side in front of the Ultras, that used to be a disaster area. Um, that part of the pitch was a nightmare and they just decided we're going to make a real effort yeah. and they paid a lot of money mm -hmm. and they got a groundsman who was absolutely on it and great credit to them. Yeah, Mother, I mean, when I was playing so early 2000s was a terrible pitch. I used yeah. to hate going to first part, it was a bad part. You know, the, 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 the middle of the pitch was all cut up, you know, and the, the flanks. And they've invested in it. They invested in the hybrid pitch. I think you know yeah. a lot of clubs are investing. I think Hearts have done it as well. So, I think if you invest in it, you really and you get the, the best groundsman you can possibly get, then you should be able to take care of your pitch. Yeah, it absolutely. makes it a wee bit easier when you get a million and a half hand out and to pay it back over twenty years. Yeah, or you use your money wisely of all the money that you've had over the last few years as well. <laughs> Um, yep. So there you are, of um, and of course there's nothing worse than a manager who every two months says he needs another three players. Yep. Um, so let's crack on. Um, after the VAR... <laughs> Slag off the pitch, I'm not <laughs> No, no, that's why I just blanked you. Uh, anyway, let's crack on because we've got Europa League to think about. Um, so Haaland is out. He's not going to play, which uh, I don't know about you. Uh, I was looking forward to seeing him because he's such a specimen. Mm. He's a really great player. It's always good to see the, the best players. The one that I always recall um, when we were doing the commentary uh, at Ibrox in one of the games was, you know, Rangers actually had uh, defeated Leon 3-0 over there. And Leon came to Ibrox and Benzema was playing. He scored a hat trick. Oh, he was, he was outrageous. I mean, he, what a player he was. Yeah, listen, I'm sure the Rangers supporters are delighted he's not travelling, but, you know, you'd like to see players like that. He's a top, top player, you know, one of the best young strikers in Europe, so it's disappointing from a neutral point of view that he's not playing, but for Rangers it is a massive boost, a yeah. massive boost. They're not the same team without him. No, and, and of course the other thing about it, I think a lot of Rangers fans will feel uh, confident. I, I sometimes like to dismiss anybody who's giving it all bars. Borussia Dortmund must have had a, an off day, Richard. That was a fantastic result last week. Yeah, it was. I mean, that's, you know, in the time I've been kind of, you know, even the time I've been playing, the, watching Rangers, that's the best I've seen Rangers. Yeah. Everybody, you know, I, I heard people say that Barisic was maybe a little bit off it, and yeah, he maybe was compared to the standards he's hit before, but every other player was, you know, Ryan Kent was unplayable, Morelos. You think that's the best you've seen Rangers? I think it's the best I've seen them. I think for a full collective performance. Yeah? I think wow. they, if you look at even the, the, the two goals they concede, are excellent goals. You know that you're playing against top opposition. That can happen, um, but I think I just think I, th I thought they were excellent. I thought the energy, um, the, the threat they posed, and I, I do agree. Not Haaland not in the team is is a huge boost for Rangers. But you know Dortmund won six 0 at the weekend, so um, yeah. they, they obviously they were obviously hurting from that result, and it'll still be a real tough game. But you know, and, and it's going to take the same level of performance from Rangers again. But I just thought, like to, like I said, to a man, I thought they were excellent. Yeah, it, it, this tie is not over, but I am, I, I've got that feeling that Rangers will do enough, get a goal on the night. Uh, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst certainly is uh, not a manager who's thinking we're at home and we're going to sit in. That's not in the plan. This is what he had to say uh, today with regards to that. I think what we did last week is also at the right time. We pressed them a little bit higher and tried to win the ball and be dangerous. I don't think it's in our system to sit deep. We have to avoid it. I believe we can get through, which is the most important thing. We had a great performance last week and we're all happy with the game we played. We are in a good position to play the second leg, but I think our focus has to be to play uh, as strong as possible tomorrow and try to win the game. Uh, and I think that's that's the right way to approach it, Ruffy. As soon as you start sitting in and, you know, 
there's, they've got a number of players, whether Haaland plays as Richard mentioned or not, they've got, they've got other good <coughs> players there, Bellingham for one. No, you're, you're not going to sit in with 50,000 supporters behind you, you know, they're going to want you to go forward and get a goal, they will get chances, and the evidence of last week, I still think they'll get goals, you know, I think their defence was poor, you're right, they've got quality players in the in the side, but so have Rangers, uh, and Rangers proved that last week, and I think coming off the park at the end and leading up to this game, I'm sure the Rangers players will be very confident in getting in and, and getting through to the next round. Yeah, and Alfredo Morelos is looking to surpass Henrik Larsson's European goal-scoring record, which is no mean feat. Um, 31 goals in 59 games in the Europa League, it's just putting him third on the list of all-time goal-scorers, which is fantastic. Yeah, I think he comes to life in the Europa League. Yeah, I think he's been superb for Rangers over the last three or four seasons. Turns up in the big games. I think the bigger the game, the, be the better for Morelos. Um, you know, I think Van Bronckhurst has got something out of him. I, think, I don't think he was the same player under Gerrard. I think he's, he's maybe a wee bit sharper. He's maybe you know lost a wee bit of weight. Whatever it is, he looks sharper. Whatever yeah. it is. And he's only nine goals behind Larson. Yeah, I, th I think if, if he stays at Rangers for you know next season or two, then he'll pass it. Yeah. And I think that would be a phenomenal record for him. But he's... He's been tremendous in Europe. Uh, the other thing I was going to say to you is, I, I don't know what it is, maybe it's just the seasons for uh, the <laughs> Colombian, but you know, he looks as if he's sharp at the moment. Mm. Yeah, he does. Um, he's, he's kind of went away with Colombia. I know he never played a lot or at all, I don't think, but he came back and he just looks, he looks like he's enjoying his football. He looks like he's happy. Yeah. He, he, he looks like he's, you know, he just wants to play at Rangers. Now, maybe the, the, the pen has dropped a bit that he, you know, we've heard about. I think he must have been linked to about forty clubs since he got here. Now, if you want to get that big move, you need to you need to play well on a consistent basis. And at the moment, he's he's um, he's, he's doing that, um, and he's a huge asset for Rangers. Um, I think you see you see what they are as a team without him. I think they miss him massively, which is, is understandable in the form he's in at the moment. But yeah, he just as Tam said, I don't know what what has changed, um, but there's something there's definitely something different about him since uh, Van Bronckhorst came to the club. Yeah, OK, w one downside to all of this is Aaron Ramsey's uh, going to miss out again. Um, I think Rangers fans were itching to see him. He just hasn't managed to get that run of games they were hoping for. Um, now, thankfully, Alison's already written that column, so she's, <laughs> she's come out of hiding after last week. But 98 minutes in total is not really what they were hoping for. They'll be looking, maybe if he could shake off the injury over the next few weeks... And, and try and force his way into that team. Yeah, I think they, they obviously they got him because he hadn't been playing at Juventus. I yeah. think that he, you know, he's not been a regular at Juventus. He's had injury problems. You know, he's came to Rangers at a time where Rangers have probably looked at that deal and said, you know, what's the financial hit to us? <coughs> and they've said, well, he's worth a punt. You know, and he's, he's a player of that quality is going to be worth the money that they're supposedly paying. So he will hope that he gets some back for the big games, big games, i.e. the old firm games. There's going to be two old firm games that are going to be absolutely ginormous this season. So if he's in there playing and fit, then he'll be a good signing. You know, and if Rangers going to win the league, nobody will say a thing. But if he doesn't play much and Celtic win the league, he'll be a flop. That's just the way it is. Mm. Uh, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see if he can get himself fit for the for the next Celtic old firm game in April. And to be I, fair, if I, he didn't I was, win the... Yeah, I was going to ask Richard, <coughs> to when you started to now... Is the training more intense than what it was at the beginning? Because we see all these calves and groins and, and all that. Is it, is, it, is it a different kind of training? Yeah, it, it tends to be you don't train for as long, but you train more intensely when you do train. You know, I think the way the, the game's gone the same way. Um, you know, in terms of distance cover, I don't know what it would have been 10, 15 years ago, but, you know, we, we get all that monitored. So, so you're, the sports scientists, they want you to cover a certain amount of ground within a week of training um, and then a lot of that has got to be high intensity because if you're then asking players to sprint on a, a Saturday if they haven't sprinted all week it's a shock to the system your nervous system needs to kind of wake up so I think it's much more intense now than it was when I started it was it tended to be like longer kind of sessions um, but yeah that'll be you know that'll be why you get so many calf injuries obviously an injury I suffered myself but um, yeah it's 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 different to when I started um, but I much prefer it now because the sessions are shorter and you know it's it's more kind of uh, high intensity related. The thing, the thing is, well, Peter, sorry, there's no hiding now. I think if, do, you, do you take it you train with the GPS vessel? Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what I was just. Aye, so there's no hiding now. You can't you can't just hide and just 
cruise to a training session. Yeah. I'm sure you've all got numbers and targets you've got to hit on a weekly basis, especially in games as well. So there's no hiding place, and I think that's good for players as well. But you know, some, sometimes these monitors switch themselves off, and you just, you know, <laughs> through no fault of your own, they just go off, and yeah. then you're, you're not recorded. So T Two things that stick in my head about that, and obviously now the whole thing has moved on, and players professionally has moved on. When you've got the monitor on, would it pick? I mean, there are some times when obviously the the team are looking at the stats and then they'd say, wait a minute, this player's been running at 65 miles an hour. Um, it'll pick that up, wouldn't it? I'm just thinking because, you know, when it was intense in the 70s for training at Thistle, if Ruffy couldn't be bothered, he'd get in a taxi <laughs> and get to the other end where the, the boys were going to run to <laughs> and he'd wait there and then, and then he'd jump in. And you'd think, I'm no, kidding. Sorry. That's what he did. He'd, he would jump in at the end. And I just wonder, as the, guy, as the, as the manager sitting down with the coaches, they go, hey, wait a minute, Ruffy's doing about 65 mile an hour there. You know? And he stopped to the lights <laughs> I do I do think um, if you were to do that they would um, they would pick it up they'd pick it up Ruffy it's not, it's not for you son is it oh, I mean if did, I, I never ever got you, you turn up for pre-season training and they go on a 10 mile run and the, the coach would say everybody stick together you're never yeah. going to stick together on a 10 mile run no, particularly no. goalkeepers are only going to keep up with the, yeah. the fitter people in the team so you've always got to carry a wee yeah. pound in your pocket <laughs> just for the tax <laughs> <laughs> and I, I remember a number of players, especially stories I'm reading uh, down south, where a, a player would come in and they'd want to absolutely batter to the front to prove to the manager and everything. And, and then the, the players at the back have to catch up with them in the run and they'd say, listen, start out at a steady pace so we can all keep pace. You know, the last thing they want is a show off or somebody who is like super fit. Busy. busy yeah, busy. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you that. I mean, yeah. I hated long distance stuff. I hated it. I would rather do 100 metres, like 100, 100 metres, than, than long distance stuff. I hated it. Yeah. So I was always tailed off at the back, long distance, but a good sprinter. Yeah, absolutely. Which, which one are you? I'm the same. Um, I think the way the game is, it's short. You know, you're never running for more than 30 seconds in a game. So why do you need to do that in pre-season? Uh, so it's like short uh, blast. More more runs, more intense, but it's, it's you know, for less time. Yeah. Uh, interesting. It would be interesting to see what the take is from the European aspect of this and the British way of doing the long runs. Interesting to see the contrast, maybe the thought process on it. But nevertheless, um, we're looking now at Rangers, Borussia top, and I think Rangers, I think Rangers can, can get through. Ruffy, I'm going to go for Rangers to get a draw in this one because they'd be happy with a 1-1. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I, I don't think... Uh the Germans will be that bad. I think they'll, they'll, they'll want to put up a show. They'll keep telling us that it was a it was a one-off. But the only worry for me is if they get an early goal. You know how the fans react, how the players react. But I still think Rangers have got enough to score goals against them. So I'm going to go a draw as well. I'm going to go one each. Richard, where are you going? Well, in the interest of Scottish football, I was completely wrong last week. So I'm going to say Dortmund are going to win and go through. Yeah. In the hope that I'm in completely hope you're wrong. Completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> was, was <it> <laughs> That's what I just said. I just said. By the way, Richard is R I C H A R D. Just in case, so you don't miss out here. Um, Back for shot. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Because, oh, listen, you're not the only one. I mean, I've I talked to some of my mates who are absolute diehard Rangers fans, and they couldn't believe it. I mean, we were in the press box, you couldn't. We were sitting in the press box, and the boys are looking and going, Rangers are 2 nothing up. I mean, it was just outrageous. Yeah, it was. I mean, like I say, it was fantastic. And, you know, if they do that kind of thing at Ibrox, I mean, I think that you know, the stadium will take off. But, um, no, it was a, a fabulous result. And, like I say, I, I, I thought Dortmund were going to win quite comfortably. Um, so hopefully I'm wrong again this week. Yeah, absolutely. There's lots of people um, offering <laughs> their opinion on it, but Tam, where, where's your money on this one? Are you? I think there will be loads of goals again. Yeah, I think I'll go for three-two to Dortmund. I think Rangers will go through. I think I can't see it. Dortmund will need attack. They need to they need attack and score goals. Yeah. What about? I'll leave plenty of space for Rangers, but I think there'll be lots of goals. Three-two to Dortmund. Rangers yeah. to go through. Rangers to go through. What about the Rangers eleven? What do you make of uh, the? Possibly uh, McGregor and Gold, Tavernier, Golson, Bassey and Barisic, um, which is a, an interesting one. Uh, Jack, Lindstrom, Aribo, and then Arfield, Morelis and Kent. Yep, very strong side. I think Ryan Jack coming into the team has been massive for Rangers. I think he's given them a bit of extra security defensively in the middle of the pitch. <coughs> Lindstrom seems to be coming on to a game as well. Aribo, Kent, they're dangerous up front. Arfield can get beyond Morelos, so 
No, that's a really strong Rangers side, you know, as strong as they could put out probably. And I think there'll be a lot of goals and they might lose it lose a game on the night, but I don't think they'll go I don't think they'll go out. Yeah. Um Ryan Jack really has been I think he's changed the way the, the, the confidence from the middle of the park onwards. He just he's a steadying influence, plus of course, you know, really good player, he can pick a pass as well. Yeah, I mean I think that's kinda of sometimes understated with Ryan Jack. He is a, a very good football player. Um, but he's just he's just he understands the game. He knows where to be. You know, we've kind of seen Tavernier likes to, to bomb on. Ryan Jack fills his space. On the other side, he tends to do the same. You know, he just picks up good positions all the time, and he allows Rangers to keep. You know, when they're on the attack, he's just the anchor at the back, and the ball will break out to him, and he wins the ball back, and he keeps things going. Without him and the team, I think sometimes they're a bit open in the middle of the pitch. So yeah. teams clear the ball, and they're, <clears throat> they're able to get up the pitch because he's not there. Is he a wee bit like McGregor for Celtic? I think I think he is. I think I think with all fairness, I think McGregor's got a little bit more quality on the ball yeah. than Ryan Jack, and I think Ryan Jack's got a bit more defensive now about him. Um, but very very similar, and I think they're very similar in terms of the teams that Rangers and Celtic are with and without the players. I think they're both as influential as each other for their respective teams. Yeah. Okay. Um, don't worry. Uh, lots of questions that we try and answer on the, the stream as well. Gordon McLean's worried about you. Says, "What's the score? Is Richard being bumped from the BBC?" No. We, we like working with double agents, Ruffy. Don't we? Tom works for the BBC. <laughs> Charlie sometimes subs in at Five Live. Yeah. We're quite happy for Richard to go there, and um, you know, and the, the 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 boys in there are a good bunch of lads as well. They have a wee bit of chat. Obviously, no laughs in that in, in the. BBC program, but other than that, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. He's got you, for for the ying, there's a yang, isn't yeah, there? You, yeah, you go there to be un unbelievably serious, and you go yeah. here to realise it's an entertainment, and we want to have a bit of fun. Yeah, and he's he's been up at Aberdeen, so he'll know most of the accents in the BBC. <laughs> 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 Brilliant, Ruffy, there you are. That's it. Oh, you won from Rob McLean about you, Ruffy. I'm not saying anything about that. Um, anyway, uh, so we think Rangers are going to go through. Fingers crossed. Um, what do you think on that basis as well? Give us your thoughts. I mean, there's some people saying, hey, Balogun's back. Could he play? Um, listen, it's just a it's a possible uh, 11. Bassi actually out at left side, I thought, played well against uh, United at the weekend. I mean, he, he laid it on a plate for a rebo, the goal. Yeah, I think he's an excellent player. Barisic. I like him left side. Yeah, I think he's a good yeah. player. I, I think um, I don't think Barisic has been particularly good this season. I think he's he's fell off it a wee bit. Yeah. You know, when he first came into Rangers from was it Osijek, I thought I thought it Rangers could have sold him for big money. Yeah. You know, but he's he's seemed to be back away the last you know year eighteen months. But he's still a good player. But yeah. he's now got a lot of competition there because Barisic can move out there and Balogun can come in. So they've got competition at the back. We missed Charlie on the show when he's he's the, he works out what the players are worth. Um, because at one point Barisic was worth about thirty two and a half yes. million, wasn't he? It was Ned Bob was two million. <laughs> <laughs> was it a contract at the end of the season to exactly. get two million from him? Yeah, exactly. Charlie oh. was absolutely fantastic. He, he knew how to throw a grenade in, by the way. That's what we need to get Richard to do. More of the old Borussia Dortmund will win yeah. <laughs> stuff. And he'll Charlie's soon know all about it. face when he did it. Uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. We're trying to get Fred yeah. two million. Two million. <laughs> <laughs> I just see oh, by the way, you want to have seen it. It was absolutely fantastic. They battered them and we love that. Anyway, uh, what about Bodo Glimt against Celtic? Um, this one, Celtic are more than capable of going over there and scoring a couple of goals, Ruffy. Uh, I mean, this is the thing about it. The only thing, I, I just, the back line is just still, there's something in that central defence that's not clicking. No, oh, again, you've got to go with the evidence of last week. You know, it was a poor, poor performance, I thought. That team are head and shoulders, you know, comfortable on the ball, big, strong boys, you know, and they just waited uh, and pounced. And, that, and that's what happens when you play against Celtic, you know, that they're, they're charging forward and charging forward and their discipline goes at the back. And if you're sharp enough, you'll catch them out. Uh, and that's what the, the top teams do. And they're still losing these goals that we thought that they, they cleaned up their act a wee bit. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's an artificial uh, pitch, I don't think. Uh, Ange Postecoglou is that bothered about training on it? Just you know what to expect. They know the job they have to do. Yeah, of course they've got to be better than they were last week. They've got to be more clinical. Um, I think you know Ange Postecoglou's way seems to be that he wants to outscore teams. You know, he, he, I think he said he doesn't care about clean sheets and stuff. And that's you know, as you mentioned before, it's an entertainment business. And if you're a Celtic fan watching your team trying to score loads of goals, it's great. Obviously, when you don't score the goals and you concede at the other end, it's not so great. But I think. You know, I would like to think Celtic have got will have enough to go over there and score a couple of goals and, and go through in the tie. But 
Um, but there is that kind of vulnerability, I think, because they they all go forward. I think I think actually Starfield seems to be more vulnerable when he's got the ball. Like defensively, I think he's okay and he's quick and he's he's you know good in one v one situations. But I think when he has the ball, I think that's when he poses the biggest threat to Celtic because he he doesn't look comfortable on the ball. No, I agree with you wholeheartedly. But the the other problem is uh, uh, you have to deal with the evidence, Tam. And quite simply, when teams do score against Celtic, it's down that centre area. Yeah, I think it's central that you know they cut open twice uh, against Bodo Glimt at Parkhead. I thought they were excellent. I thought they were strong. They were streetwise. You know, clever team. I don't see Celtic going through this tie. I hope I'm wrong. You know, but uh, I think that again, I think there'll be goals in the game because Celtic will go and attack and try and score two or three. But I think they'll concede three or four. I, th- I can see four two, four three to Bodo Glimt. Yeah, interestingly enough, Ange Postecoglou. We talk about it week in, week out. Um, he's going for Plan A, which is. Attack, attack, attack. The whole reason we you know, I'm trying to sort of build a, a way of playing for this football club and sort of my beliefs is that we don't have to change our approach because you know, what we know is we need goals and that's what we do every week. So I think it would be a bigger challenge for us if we had to sort of change our approach and become more expansive or more aggressive. I, I don't think... I don't think anyone could accuse us of not being that uh, on a weekly basis. Yeah, so um, I think, he, I mean, uh, don't get me wrong, by the way, I have to say, it is great to watch when they're going forward, Richard. You know, but last week I thought that team, you know, who weren't any great shakes, although they did, and I hold my hands up, they beat Roma 6 yeah. 1. Um, but, you know, he's he is going to play out <clears> there to try and get those goals early and he's going to have a goal well he has to i mean similar to, to dortmund you know the, the Celtic have to go over there and score goals um and and you know yes that'll leave them kind of exposed at the back as as we've seen last week but that's the way postacogo likes to play as high energy that's what he wants from his teams but again i mean even if Celtic do go out I don't think it's a big a big disaster. I don't think this tournament is it means that much to, to a club like Celtic, especially when the league tight, the league race is so tight. I think if Celtic were far and away, you know, 10, 15 points clear in the league, then yes, concentrate on this because the league's almost sewn up. But the league is so tight, and we can see from the weekend, you know, a lit, you know, a kind of last what five minute goal for Celtic changes the whole perspective of the title race. So I think he'll be he'll be more worried about that. And Celtic will go there and try and score goals. If they go through then great. If they don't, <clears throat> I'm not sure that they'll be overly overly bothered by that. No, no it was funny. All oh, the Celtic fans before the game, first leg, oh, we can win this tournament and mm. we're oh. <coughs> then after it <laughs> I, I, send the reserves there. I, Tom, I, I don't kid, care about this. Tom, I kid you know what, there's a mate who says, it, it? should I book two tickets for Albania? <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't stop laughing. I said, no, you need an appointment with a doctor. You're not going to win this tournament. Get a grip of yourself. Because even Ange Postecoglou admits there's progression. He's building a side. The ambition is undoubtedly the league. But there are other players that he'll want to get in. So he's in this, he's still in what I call the embryonic stage of his, his tenure as manager at Tam. So, you know, Europe, I think Richard's absolutely 100% correct. He may well look at it. Ruffy, what do you make of the team um, that p- could take to the field? Hart and Goal, Ralston, Carter, Vickers, Starfelt, Juranovic, o- O'Reilly, McGregor, Hatate, Abada, Giacomakis and Yota. And of course, the, the, the Greek striker is... You know, he'll be on a high after a hat trick. Yeah, he certainly will. But it's near enough the same side as, as last week. Yeah, yeah, they need to go for it, but I, I still worry about them at the back. Yeah. Uh I I don't think it'll be a high scoring game. I no. don't I, I don't think Celtic could be that poor again. I'd, I would probably go for something like one each. You yeah. know, if uh, but that's obviously not not good enough. But uh, we'll wait and see. You know, I I I I don't buy into this plan A, plan A, plan A. You know, I think yeah. you've got to have a plan B. I think the Real Betis game was a perfect example. Two nothing up with five minutes to go at half time, and you just keep charging forward and you lose two goals. You know, then they've probably seen that game out. They wouldn't be in this competition. Yeah. Okay. You're a bottle of laughs, aren't you? <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so, uh, so, so, what's your, so you're going to draw? Yeah. So, two each draw. Two each. I'm going. I'm. I'm. I'm going to go two one. Two one. Bodo Glimt. Three two. Bodo Glimt. Yeah, OK. Uh, right, uh, just out of curiosity, your thoughts, guys. Just We're going to speak to Stuart Maxwell, who is the uh, manager of um, Kirk and Tillock, Rob Roy, uh, in just a second. But just one other little 
caveat to the Champions League. Everybody's talking about the money that's going to be available to the winners who will go straight into the group stages, which is fantastic. But obviously we're thinking second year, third year, and there are all sorts of permutations that need to happen for us to maintain in that top 10 the coefficient to try and get one in and then one only having to play one qualifier. Yeah, but I mean, to me that in itself and, and all the kind of hoops that certain countries have to jump through is a nonsense. It's the Champions League. So the champions of each of their leagues should get in straight away into the group stages. You know, and, and you know, if you're wanting teams to play, you know, in qualifying rounds, make it the third and fourth place teams in England and Spain and, and Italy. Yes, those clubs are probably bigger than, than the clubs that we've got in Scotland. But that gap is always going to widen unless unless the champions keep getting into the, the uh, getting into the group stages. So yes, we, there are loads of things we need to do. You know, Rangers and Celtic of you know Rangers' record in Europe has has been great for the coefficient and in the way Scotland performing as well. But I just think that it's it's ridiculous. It's called the Champions League, and you get team. I, I can't. When was you know there's there's been seasons where the winner of the Champions League haven't even been the winners of their domestic league and that happens quite often and I think to myself that's ridiculous because it's called, you know, fine if you want to call it the European Cup or something, yeah. don't call it the Champions League when you've got teams that finish fourth in the league winning the Champions League, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely and then if I can just give you a little lesson in what this whole league's about is greed. When you've got, <laughs> when you've got guys like Karl Heinz Rummenigge, we don't like him on this show, no, uh, Florentino Perez and Juan Laporta, Ruffy, mm -hmm. all of them... <clears throat> Again, looking out for themselves, and when they're that much in debt, they want every morsel they can get a hold of and deny some of the other clubs the money. Yeah, and they're, they're, as, as Richard said, they're ruining it for everybody else. You know, the, the, this power struggle that's going on. You know, yeah, everybody likes to see the best players at your club, but uh, it really has to. What, what is the fair play all about? Yeah. What was that they brought in? You know, it was, it was a nonsense. It was, it was a nonsense, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It is great. And the three guys you mentioned have took more backhanders than Ruffick than often. Um, well, allegedly, by the way, um, UEFA, it's uh, McManus. I think it's Thomas McManus is how you deal with that's his full name. Just if you want to put, <laughs> if you want to fire that out, uh, apologies to those three. I know they don't take backhanders. Um, we're talking, <laughs> honestly, you're worse than Cowan. Uh, McCrory, uh, Ross McCrory, we'll talk about him. We'll talk about Kieran Tierney uh, as well. We'll talk about Chelsea in the Champions League. We'll look ahead to Atletico Madrid, Man United, and Benfica against Ajax. Uh, and of course, there are uh, some English Premier League games as well. Uh, we always like to keep our hand on uh, clubs, you know, further down the leagues who have got aspirations and ambitions to go through this pyramid system. I'm delighted to see one of our old friends, Stuart Maxwell, who is the manager, and for a significant amount of time, may I add, uh, Kirk and Tillock, Rob Roy, which is always good to see a manager in place. Uh, Stuart, you obviously want your team to be able to go back to uh, Kirk and Tillock in among the local community. Uh, you sold the ground, you've got a kitty there, um, and <laughs> it's it was seemingly all in place with the council to get a, a ground where you could actually build it for the community and for Kirk and Tillock, Rob Roy. W what's the hold-up? Uh, basically, Peter, uh, 2018 was, was all sort of agreed. Uh, the council council leaders... Dude had a photo with our chairman holding the, holding the scarves, etc. Rob Roy's coming home, and uh, everything was, was was in place. We were starting to do community engagement and uh, prepare things for coming coming back to Kirk and Tillock. Uh, and then most recently, obviously the, the, the pandemic kicked in, stalled things a bit as well. So uh, uh, about. Three months ago, the, the chairman was uh, approached by the EDC to get all the sort of plans together that we had, we had designed. Uh, and so we, we thought, this is it, we're, we're ready to go. Uh, uh, so Neil done that, Neil's our chartered accountant. Got everything in place for the lawyers, etc., all the legals. What uh, went to a sort of frantic timeline. And then I woke up uh, uh, about three weeks later to all these messages saying Kirk and Tilt Rob Roy's coming home. Uh, so obviously, like I say, it was like seven in the morning. I, I left, left Neil at about half nine. Contact him, said, great news that we've done it. And he, and he says, no, he says the council have decided 
for legal reasons that they, they won't take our investment. And uh, that's the last uh, bit of dialogue we've had with them. Yeah, I, I mean, that's obviously a body blow um, to Kirk and Tillich. You obviously had high hopes of being able to um, go back into the community. Um, was there any reasons given as to why they had knocked back the, the agreement that seemingly was in place? Basically said it was a it was a tax reason, Peter, but they didn't elaborate on it. But the sort of strange thing is, my, my chairman's a chartered accountant, so uh, he's obviously well, well, uh, well adversed in this field, you know. So, and uh, he obviously spoke to his lawyers, and they, they didn't see any issue, and it's still not been explained by the council lawyer why it wouldn't go any further. And I presume, from your point of view, the council um, are always going to have to put a financial commitment in, and you're going to put a, a commitment in as well. Um, uh, is there is there any plan talks to try and get this moving forward again? Well, the, the plan was Peter that we would invest we we would invest about a million pounds from the sale of that our, our stadium. So basically, Rob Roy were putting that back into the community because it was going to be a community complex. Like we've done three three years of engagement with the community, we had everything in place. And then the council decided they were going to fund that extra million pound themselves, and now they're going to put it out to a tender. And which by is putting it open to any anyone, yeah, by putting it out to a tender, uh, what does that what does that mean for for Kirk and Tilly? If they put it out to a tender and somebody buys the land, not necessarily for football, is that the game over for you? Well, regardless what MD does with the stadium, whatever they do, Rob Roy would. We get the game, I think, Peter. You're, t you're talking 144 year history here. An well, institution of the community as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, that that is, uh, <clears throat> if Rob Roy was to go, um, it, it's part of the community, as Stuart mentioned there, 144 years of history there. Um, you would like to think sooner or later somebody would, in an arbitrary sense, step in and say, look, let's get the two together, let's see how we can make this happen. Yeah, you're right, you know, Captain Tillich, Rob Roy has got a, trem a tremendous tradition in the community, particularly in the Scottish Cup itself, you know, having been down to Glen Afton at, at Newcomer, I, I know what the community need, you know, we've seen it now with the success of Auchin Lake uh, and Cumnox and all them, and uh, not everybody can afford to go to senior football, you know, so you've got to give the people who can't another avenue and go and support a team, and, and Captain Tillich at one stage was one of the biggest team, junior teams, and it'd be a shame you know, for, for something like this to happen. Sometimes you need somebody on a council for to want it to happen, you know, and they, they, they get what it's all about. And yeah. sometimes if you don't have that, then you're, you're just hitting your head against a brick wall. Yeah, I think there needs to be a wee bit of transparency here, um, Tam, um, from both parties to say, look, here's, a, here's the major stumbling block. This is why we disagreed. Can we, can we somehow get to another point here where we can start this again? Yeah, it's been dragging on for a long time. You know, I know Maxie well and, and Craig Young and guys at Rob Roy, and they're desperate to get back to, to Kirk and Tillock. And I think for the whole community, you know, to get a, a nice Astro turf pitch, the whole community would get the use out of that. It wouldn't just be Rob Roy. Yeah. It'd be boys' clubs, it'd be the community. So, you know, I think they're playing up at Cumbernauld Juniors at the minute, and it's asking a lot for Rob Roy. And, and Ruffy's right, Rob Roy were always traditionally a, a big club in junior football. Now they're obviously uh, in, the, in the other leagues, so... Listen, I hope, I hope they can get around the table together and get this sorted out and Rob Roy can get back to Kirk and Tillock. You know, I've seen the petitions on social media in the last couple of weeks. I'm thoroughly behind it. I'm sure a lot of people are as well. So hopefully they can get back there and, and people in the council take note, not just of this interview, but uh, a lot of things that are getting sent to them in regards to Rob Roy. Yeah, absolutely. Stuart, we're <laughs> delighted that you uh, have uh, taken the time out to come on and put the case forward and hopefully, fingers crossed, um, we get a, a positive resolution for you and you're back in the local community uh, managing the club that you love um, as well. Keep our fingers crossed. Great to hear from Stuart Maxwell there on Kirk and Tillich, Rob Roy. And if the councillors um, undoubtedly will get the message and uh, obviously I've watched Stuart stayed on the show hopefully that will spark them into action fingers crossed, good to hear from Stuart Maxwell good lad, still plays a bit of football as well uh, Ruffy I might as well tell you plays for, plays for Dukla um, yep. Yep. Un I mean as a midfielder I look and I think to myself he's made 
He must have a better engine than you. Well, he has. He's got 30. Yeah. He makes 13 runs, and if he gets one goal, he tells yeah. everybody about it. You know, but, <laughs> you know, when you, you get a bit despondent when you pick somebody out 13 times, you know, and then you think, why bother? You know. He's very, he's very fortunate. He wasn't a, uh, on our show during COVID because that painting is beginning to get me as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, the good news is that's the that's the only house Stuart's managed to decorate at the moment. <laughs> so he's got his painting there as well. It's available for the right price, guys. Yeah, it's available for the right price, Ruffy. <laughs> absolutely. Hang on to the now, Stuart. I don't think <laughs> don't want to start an auction on it, but brilliant. Uh, good to speak to Stuart Maxwell. Um, we like to talk about football right across all the divisions as well. Um, we were going to talk about Dundee St. Man, but the game's been postponed, which is an absolute uh, nightmare again. It was a chance for Mark McGee and, of course, Stephen Robinson uh, to lock horns, but it's going to be rescheduled. Uh, what about you guys? Uh, last night, Ruffy, and there's no point. I feel as if there's a real divide in the show today because you guys had the chance to really fire yourself into contention yeah. at that championship. And you blew it at home, one nothing. Martin, yeah, yeah, give well, us your spiel that you gave us the last No, well fortunately, well, fortunately enough, <laughs> we saw the 90 minutes. Yeah. You know, we can give you an honest account. You obviously weren't there, so yeah. we, we did. I get part of Thistle TV in my, we, we my dish. <laughs> <laughs> Does it just swivel the whole way? <laughs> uh, no, we had chances to win the game, yeah. uh, particularly the penalty. Uh, but you know the the endeavour was there. You know the boys went forward and, and tried to win the game. Which the disappointing thing was, we all knew if we'd won it, we were in third in the league and would get into the four, uh, and that's a disappointing one. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure. Okay, the pitch didn't help us at all. You know, I think we're a really good football inside. We are quite lightweight, aren't we, as a team? You know, great. We we are players, if you want to put it that way, and that that kind of part just didn't suit us the other night. But uh, there's a long way to go yet. And we've got games in hand. Yeah. The other thing about it is, you always look and see to yourself. Okay, missed out on an opportunity last time. You could maybe now regroup next three games. Who have you got? Uh, Wraith away, Abroth away, and. Inverness. Inverness at home. Inverness. So that's really all over for the championship now <laughs> for them, by the way. Cause, they, cause get, they might get any fourth. Playoffs is going to be a target. Well, they're not going to win against Ray. <laughs> so they're not going to go up to Gayfield and win against Dick Campbell's side no. and then Inverness. Yeah, Come they're, on. They're going to play in decent yeah. pitches. So yeah. I, I fancy them to win the two away games yeah. but at home against Inverness. Yeah, you, nah, hey, no. you just remember Hibs Hart's prediction. <laughs> <laughs> Thinks he can back and bite you. <laughs> exactly, I know. Yeah, exactly. But listen, um, by the way, look at, look at the look in his eye. I can do you want me to tell you when I last saw that look? The PFA when he didn't win Player of the Year. <laughs> hey, but listen, I tell you what, there's a better chance that we'll win this league than I ever had a win in Player of the Year. Yeah. So. <laughs> do you feel confident that you can, if you've got a good pitch, and let's be honest about it, the weather's mental. So the other pitches are not going to be great either. And you're, you've, you've, he's already said you're a good footballing side. Um, I mean, it's a body blow last night, but these three teams you're coming up against next, if you come out of that, what, seven out of nine points, do you, do you still think you're in it? Or do you think there's... I think I think it would need to take... It would take something like that for us to still be in it. I think yeah. because our growth have been so strong and have, you know, consistently have been by far and away the best team in the league. You know, other teams have went on good runs ourselves. We were unbeaten in, in, was it 14, you said? So, you know, but a lot of those were draws. Um, but I think our growth have been far and away the, the, the best team, the most... Just, just the hardest team to play against and obviously the most successful team thus far. Um, so these next three games will be a huge marker to, to, to where we are. You know, you have to remember as well, we were promoted last year. So you're kind of almost playing catch up with these teams anyway. Yeah. Um, but I do think we are a good football inside. I think, you know, our, our midfield two and, and Stuart Bannigan and, and Rostock, I think they're the best midfield in the league. Yeah. Um, you throw kind of um, Robbie Crawford into that as well. And I think we, we, we're really strong in that area. But... I think sometimes we're a, we're a little bit too nice. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we can be a bit, you know, a bit more aggressive in certain areas of the pitch. But you know, a lot of that's curtailed now by the referees, and obviously you're wanting VAR brought in, so that's going to really curtail the aggressiveness yeah. of football. But um, I think we're well, you know, playoffs is a, as a obviously a, you look at the, the way the league split itself. I think playoffs is a definite ambition of ours. 
Um, but these next three games will go a long way to decide whether we can actually be proper title contenders. Yeah, Steve McNamara says, I, I loved it, Campbell, but our broth will fold. I think yeah, this this will might be hoping that's the case, but I can't see it. Although I'm glad you mentioned Stuart Bannigan. He's my favourite player in that division, Ruffy. He's yeah. he's just a he's just a good midfielder. I like I like watching him. Yeah, he's deserved. He's got a testimonial uh, at the start of the next year. And I oh, think maybe a be, dinner. Be really supportive. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. We've already yeah. spoke to some top speakers for yeah. that yeah. gig. Has Brian <laughs> got it? <laughs> 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 no, I think it'll be a great year and he really deserves it. I, I don't know how many games he's actually played. You know, it's 300, 300, 300 yeah. was just yeah, there. So it's still yeah. 180 short of me. So Yeah. Yeah, so he's not really as good he's not really as good a player as I thought he was then, is he? No, he's <laughs> no, a tremendous He's player. a brilliant player. I love he's watching a lovely him. Guy good as midfielder. Well. Um okay, uh, so fingers crossed you guys can get it. I still think I think seven out of nine from the three games keeps you in the mix. Yeah, I mean that's a big ask with the teams we're going to play, I think. Wraith and Inverness have been on, on kind of sticky runs themselves, um, but they're both good sides. So, you know, they will pick up form at some point. And then you go away to Abroath, which currently is, is the hardest game in the league um, because of how good they've been at home, um, but how good they've been across the piece. So, difficult, but, you know, if, you, if you're going to win titles, that's that's the kind of run of form think, you need to go I on. I think so. there's still a lot of twists and turns because the teams that were not particularly good at the beginning have now got their act together, the Hamilton, Hamilton and, Martin, and, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and, and they will take points off it. All the boys at the top, top, you yep. know. So, Richard, right? You've got to win your games. You know, yeah. three points is massive. Yeah. Okay. Um, Ross McCrory uh, signed a new mm. extension uh, at Aberdeen, and I think Jim Goodwin pleased with that because of all the players that he would want to keep, he'd want to keep a youngster like him with tremendous potential as well. He says he po it possibly could be touted as a future captain. Um, he's not a centre half. I mean, I just hope they play him. I, I see him more as a, a holding midfielder. If they continue at centre half, I think. The thing is, if you're a utility player, and Richard's probably playing a number of positions as well. You, yeah. when, when somebody's out, you tend to get shifted about right back, centre back, centre midfield. You know, his, his best position for me is sitting, mid, sitting midfield player, yeah. defensive midfield player. And if he, if he plays a lot of games there for Aberdeen, I'll do well. I've always liked him. I liked him at Rangers. I seen him against Hibs a couple of seasons ago. I thought he was superb. His attitude, his drive, his desire. Yeah. He's got everything to be a captain. Um, I think he's a really good player. And I think that's good business for Aberdeen to get him tied up. Yeah, Jim Goodwin says he believes that the, the current squad is good enough to get European football. Um, Jim Goodwin's main task, I would suggest to you, Richard, in the summer will be to go and get two, minimum two centre-halves uh, in that side to suddenly think, I mean, it's not rocket science. You want to build a good team, good goalkeeper and a good spine. Yeah, and I think you know they've, they've missed Andrew Considine. Obviously, he's got long-term injury. I think he's he's well on the road to recovery now. But just some of the, his experience, because I think that's what they're lacking. They've got you know McCrory's played in there. I agree. I don't think he's I don't think he senses danger well enough to, to be a centre half. Yeah. But he's played in there alongside Bates, who's young. You know, the two fullbacks are young. It's it's a very tough ask at that stage of your career. I mean, I was lucky when I broke in. I, I played alongside Russell Anderson. Yeah. You know, and it's he kind of talks you through the whole game. He educates you. You learn a lot from him. So these guys are kind of. You know, they're kind of out there on their own almost trying to kind of learn their trade together, but they have, don't have, really have that experience beside them. Whereas I think Andrew Considine coming back in would be massive for them. But I do agree, I do think they need another centre half. I think they brought Gallagher in to, to be that guy for whatever reason. It's not really kind of turned out uh, to be the case. He hasn't played that many games. I know he's came in uh, recently, but he, he doesn't look as sharp as he did certainly at Motherwell. Um, but I do think they lack that, like you say, they lack that kind of ex real experience in the, in the back line. Yeah, absolutely. Two centre half trophy and all of them six foot and above. Well, that was Aberdeen's strength. You know, if you look at the, the, the centre halves, they used to have big guys, you know, powering or yeah. dominating, you know, and, and, and I've said all along in a back four and a goalkeeper, if you know your strengths and weaknesses, then it, it helps everybody all round, you yeah. know, and, and when you chop and change and people are all over the place, you don't still don't get that continuity. Well, you know better than anybody, Ruffy, a centre half who can clear the ball. That's the first thing when it comes into the dangerous areas. Even if there's zone, uh, you know, if there's zonal marking, or in some cases, Richard mentioned it the other week there on the program. I'm just going to go and get the ball, you know, and everybody else can worry. I'm going for the ball, and then over and above that, as Martin O'Neill's side proved in a three-five-two, <laughs> centre halves. 
set piece, the bigger, corners, the better. The, there you are, <laughs> absolutely. Tam McManus is against me, boom, <laughs> bang, there it is, a goal. Well, Aberdeen's biggest success was Big Alec just going and winning everything and Willie just mopping everything up and yeah. reading the game but particularly his, his well. His nose paid the price for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, his confidence wasn't shattered, I have to tell you. It's mad because <laughs> you see that, because McLeish's face is mangled, Big X, and Bobby Mills not got a mark on him. But by the way, I have to tell you, <laughs> Willie was a brilliant player, right? Absolutely top drawer. But I'd take Alex McLeish in a night out any time. Yeah. He's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Not that Willie's not funny, um, but not as funny as Alec. Um, just a great lad. Uh, Barcelona or Real Madrid. Suddenly the Celtic fans are thinking, you know, they're in love with Kieran Tierney, Ruffy, because it could be another nine million if, mm-hmm. if, if, they, if they sign him uh, for Barcelona or Real Madrid. There's a there's a sell on clause. Yeah, and uh, and all the young fullbacks that are coming out of Scotland are, are, are doing well, you know, and, and quite rightly so. Uh, even wanting some of your players over in, in Italy as well, they seem to be into fullbacks just now. Maybe just just left it too. I missed the boat. Yeah, you know, but uh, you know, I think it's great for Scottish football. We always like to see Scottish boys doing particularly well. If it's done in England or abroad or whatever, and uh, it's good for the, the the two young ones we're talking about, Aberdeen. You know, they'll be looking at you know the success that these players are getting, and that's a target you should set yourself. Yeah, um, OK. Uh, he's a wonderful player. I just wish the uh, Sc- Scotland Training Academy had thought to themselves, OK, we've had enough left-backs now, any chance we can go for midfielders and centre-forwards? Yeah, we're, we're all right in midfield. Yeah, we're all right now, yeah. Uh, centre forwards, I think, a couple centre of centre forwards. Yeah, a, a, a kind of goal-scoring centre forward who works really hard is is um, is probably something we're lacking at the moment. But yeah. you know, you could probably stick Andy Robertson up there. He'd, he'd do a job. Yeah, he'd run him behind. Yeah, I, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't listening to you for a minute. There. <laughs> you know, there was a moment when <laughs> I just said, "Yeah, just there." I thought he's about to say something sensible, and then he didn't. Um, so, so uh, just before we finish, Champions League. Uh, what game did you watch last night, Ruffy? Sorry, but I have to hold my hands up. I was. Uh, yeah, he was at the game. Of course, yeah, absolutely. You didn't, you didn't catch it. I didn't make an effort. Yeah. And I supplied uh, one of our uh, co what? presenters with a pie and a cup of tea at half time just to keep her, pick her up. Allison. Yeah. Uh, he was covered in seven or eight newspapers. Oh yeah, Ali. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I thought, the day the I, day. I thought he's looked at him and I thought, <laughs> one of the old co I thought, what are you giving him a pie for? He's coming back from no. an injury. <laughs> he wants to get super fit again. Um, yeah, um, Ali was there at the game, so he didn't catch it. But Chelsea, comfortable enough with Lille. Atletico and Juventus, uh, Villarreal and Juventus, I beg your pardon, couldn't separate them. Yeah, I watched a bit of the Chelsea game, they were very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see them having any problems. Do you think yeah. they can win it again? No, I don't think so. No, uh, I think they're lacking a goal. Lukaku's having a nightmare. I think he's six he's, touches he had the night. Ah, I seen yeah. seven. I mean, I, I, yeah. as a centre forward, there's games where you, if I played ninety minutes and there's games I come off and I never. I've more than six touches. If, six, if you get six touches ninety minutes as a player, you're hiding. You don't want the ball. Yeah, you don't want the ball. Yeah. Especially a team that did dominate most Aye. games, you know, you, yeah. you should be involved far more than Sixth. seven. Times. One of them was for kickoff. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> five touches. It's, uh, it's not good, is it? Anyway, he's probably worried about. You know, he's probably worried as he goes up to the cash line, Ruffy. Yeah, he's yeah. got enough to take out. Three hundred grand a week. Yeah, it's incredible. It takes me more touches to control the ball, so I always get loads. <laughs> yeah, uh, I didn't want to say, but nevertheless, uh, <laughs> what, about, what about the fixtures tonight? Here's a, a look at how it's all panning out. Of course, Villarreal won you. Juventus 1, Chelsea 2, Lille 0. It's Benfica against Ajax and Atletico Madrid against Manchester United. I think we'll watch Atletico Man United, Ruffy, because quite simply, Man United are just... I just love watching them. If only to sit on the couch and go, I can't believe he's worth 90 million. <laughs> I can't believe they paid 50 million for him. You know, and my favourite player to absolutely give pelters to week in, week out. You tell me who it is. It's Maguire. No, no, he's he's second. Uh, it's the other boy, Pogba. With that much ability, he should be absolutely dragging games by the scruff of the neck. Well, he can do it at international level, can't he? He, uh, you, you wonder why, you know that. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. Like it has to be a multi-millionaire, and you know, I'm not saying a lot of people. Yeah. Players, a lot of them don't seem to still have the drive, you know, to be better than what they are and I think he comes into that category. Well, um, Ralph Ranić, who's the uh, caretaker manager at the moment until the summer, uh, says they've got to start turning some of the performances into results. In the last two games, we just made sure that we rewarded ourselves with, uh, with three points in both games. 
And this is uh, what it will also be important for the future, for the Champions League games against Atletico, but also for the upcoming games in the Premier League. It's uh, not only about playing well for 45 or 60 minutes, which we did also in the, in, in the, in the games before those two games, but it's also about getting the result. I'm going for Atletico to win, Richard. Yeah, I think so, especially at home. I think um, I don't enjoy watching Man United for the men reasons you've mentioned. Um, a guy in the midfield, you know, you, you think of Brazilians, one name, you don't think of Fred. I'm not, I'm not having him. Yeah. Um, and then Maguire at the back, I just I, it pains me watching them sometimes with the money they've earned, the level they play at. So I, I, I hope Atletico win. Yeah, absolutely. You just reminded me that Fred's a Brazilian. Um, there's very few players that I can think of, one named Brazilians, that are not really up to what should be in a Brazil strip. And one of them played against you, Ruffy, and I'll never forget him. Something like Sergio or something like that. Yeah. Serginho, Serginho, right, Serginho yeah. the big number nine. Mm -hmm. He just did not look as Shite. if he was a, Bra a Brazil. That's <laughs> another one, Rafael. Rafael. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was just about to lamp you on there <laughs> until I realised you'd come up with another Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> You've had a rough day today, by the way. I've got Ruminigo on the phone for you. Um, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Raphael, yeah, he wasn't too good either. Uh, great name from the past, but nevertheless, who are you going for? Atletico or Man U? Atletico all day. Yeah, you Ruffy? 1-0. Yeah. Um, listen, I've uh, uh, thoroughly enjoyed uh, today's programme, as ever, um, because Ruffy, for the last maybe five days, and and the, the, we actually burnt it off him. He came in with the same that, talk. I watched the show yesterday. He you are a tramp. You really <laughs> is. Same, you that, did that, you did that red PLZ maestro top one. No, but the other one, he, he changed that, and then he had a an Under Armour top and a T-shirt under the that he had on for four days on the programme. And by the way, can I just say something to you? <laughs> when we started out ten years ago, he used to come in with a, a Ralph Lauren shirt, and if he liked it. That was it for the week, because <laughs> we used to stream and we were on radio, so he thought, oh, I'll get away with this. Uh, but the good thing about Richard, I mean, it's just every day is like, yeah, you're, you're hanging right? about with Thierry yeah. Mugler, aren't you? Yeah, it's, he just walks in with the, the best of here, Ruffy. Yeah. It's fantastic. Damn, and he's got the Tam's trying to keep up with him with them. Yeah, what are they all about, by the way? These sparklies. I don't know, you, it says boss on them. No. Yeah, if you... I wouldn't, I wouldn't be walking about East Coast Bride with them on, you'll be getting battered. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's absolutely again. fantastic. <laughs> There's a lorry at the end of the road. Yeah. <laughs> Get me a pair of boss. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, boss BQOZS. <laughs> that's great. Tom, Tom, Tom's, ones. Tom's got the original ones there. Anyway, always good to see you, Richard. I love the, uh, I love the Michael Jordan um, trainers. That's uh, retro stuff, top drawer. Good chat from Richard, great from Tam and from Ruffy. Hopefully you enjoyed the banter. Uh, did you enjoy the opinions, the predictions? If you did, tell your friends, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell as well and you'll get all the notifications of our unique content. We've got a one-to-one -one coming up with Pat Nevin, which will be released this week. It's absolutely fabulous. Great insight into the wee man as a great player for Clyde, going to Chelsea, Everton, Tranmere, played for Scotland and some really good forthright opinions on a number of really hard-hitting issues as well. He was the PFA chairman in England, so he's got uh, a lot of good opinions and his love of music is great as well. So he chats about some of his uh, great bands and, of course, his friendship with uh, the late, great John Peel. Always worth a listen. Uh, and you can get on their dream teams. Richard's going to pick his dream team shortly. Tam's got his up already and Ruffy and myself. So... There's more than a bit, a fair bit of content there for you to enjoy. So from Richard, from Tam, from Ruffy and myself, thanks to you for watching.